So here we have many cycles of the tangent function. Now because it is a function, one input gives us one output. For example, pi over 4 would give us 1. But there's many other places where the input's going to also give us 1. Pi pi over 4. So the tangent of pi pi over 4 also gives us 1. So while it is a function, it is not a 1 to 1 function because that 1 gives us back two different x's. So because this is not 1 to 1, it does not have an inverse. We could also see this by doing the horizontal line test. So if I go through the y value of 1, you'll see that it crosses through the tangent function, turned out infinitely many times. Okay, so because it does cross more than one, this does not pass the horizontal line test. Which again, that conclusion means that it's not one to one, and because it's not one to one, it does not have an inverse. So what we're gonna have to do is restrict the domain so that it will pass the horizontal line test. So we're going to restrict the domain. Now there's many places you can do this, but as a mathematical community, we've decided that we're going to do that right around the origin. So just this one cycle from negative pi over 2, pi over 2, that will pass the horizontal line test. Notice that negative pi over 2, that tangent is not defined, so we can't include it. Same thing at pi over 2. Okay, so as long as we restrict it between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, the tangent function will have an inverse. So let's look at the domain and the range. So let me call this function f, tangent of x. So then the inverse will be the inverse tangent. If negative 1 is not an exponent, it just means inverse. So what some people do is call this the arc tangent. Just understand it means the exact same thing. Okay, so again, we restricted our domain between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Again, not including. That would be undefined. And then if you look at the range of tangent, everything is a possibility. So the range is all reals. So because we have an inverse, domain and range are going to flip-flop. So the domain of the inverse is actually going to be all reals. That's nice. So that means the inverse tangent will always, always be defined. And then the range will be an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So that's the best way to think about this. The inverse tangent is merely an angle. So let me call it theta. So this is an angle whose tangent is x. Okay. Again, the angle is restricted between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So if I were to think about this as being on a unit circle, negative pi over 2 is coterminal with 3 pi over 2. But we're not including either one, top or bottom. So we're going to be looking at the right side of the unit circle, but not including the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's do a few examples to see what this means. Again, all we're doing is looking for an angle. So let's say I want to find the inverse tangent of, let's do that one that we started with earlier. Understanding this is an angle located somewhere on the right side of the unit circle. So I'm looking for tangent is y over x. So I'm looking for basically where the x and y are exactly the same. So that's going to take place in the first quadrant because this is positive. So square root of 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. And that's pi over 4. And we saw this just a minute ago, back in the very first step here. Pi over 4 gives us 1. So if we're restricting between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, 1 would give us back pi over 4. Okay, let's say the inverse tangent of 0. So again, I'm looking for an angle somewhere on the right side of the unit circle. whose tangent is 0. Again, remember that tangent is y over x, so I want the y to be 0. So that's going to be that 1, 0. Or 0. Let's do a couple negatives. 
say the inverse tangent of the negative square root of 3. Again, looking at the right side of the unit circle, this is an angle. So because this is negative, I'm only looking at the right side. It's got to be in the fourth quadrant. So I'm looking for where y over x is going to give us negative square root of 3. So in other words, the y needs to contain the square root of 3 part of this. So that's going to take place at 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. So that when you divide y by x, the halves, that just cancels, so you're left with negative square root of 3. Again, remember this is negative pi over 2, coterminal with 3 pi over 2, but 3 pi over 2 is not in the domain. So calling this the clockwise angle to be negative pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 is not an acceptable answer because that's not in our restriction. And finally, let's do the inverse tangent of, uh, let's do negative square root of 3 over 3. Again, this is an angle somewhere on the right side of the unit circle. And because it's negative, it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. So I'm looking for where y over x is going to be negative square root of 3 over 3. Now, negative square root of 3 over 3 was actually rationalized So that means the square root of 3 has to be on the bottom this time, so that the x-coordinate corresponds with the square root of 3. So this is going to be at square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So that when you divide y by x, you're going to get negative 1 over square root of 3, which again rationalizes back what we need. Treat it as a clockwise angle, negative 5 over 6.